Okay, so let's go ahead and put the tapped holes on the back of this thing. Let's click on hole. And we want tapped hole or, you know, hole with threads as some of you guys have come to know them as. We're going to pick the face, which is this back piece. I want to change the termination to distance and I want it to go through point two because it's only going through this back piece. If you tell it through all, it will literally go through all pieces of this thing. So the um, size of this hole is teeny tiny. It is a machinist number eight drill. So you need to scroll all the way up till you see number eight. And that's where you're going to get eight dash UNC. I'm going to click on reference one and it is point one five from the bottom and point two five from the side tell it OK. We're going to do the next one hole click somewhere near the top and this one is it's the same kind of hole except this one goes point three through it at the top and everything else should be the same reference one from the bottom it's going to be 1.85 and from the side it's going to be 0.25 and there's your punch holder I think I'm going to make mine pink because every machinist needs a pink punch holder there we go isn't that fabulous there you go so now what are we going to do with this? We're going to create an auxiliary view on the IDW. So I'm going to click I, I'm going to save it, save as. Put it in the practice folder, auxiliary view, you can call it whatever, you guys know I'm not picky about that. New PLTWA, create, project name, practice your name, please put your actual name, date, and file name, pink punch holder. Tell it OK. Click on base. Make sure auxiliary view shows up right here. Tell it OK. We want a front view and we want a left view and we want an isometric view, but we don't want any other views yet to create. Now you guys can see that this thing looks teeny tiny, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the front view and we're going to change the scale to 1.25. And that kind of makes it a little bit bigger. Now this looks like a mess. The reason for that is the hidden lines are turned on over here and you have the slope surface so it's making like double holes. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this guy, turn off global which is this. That means it takes the style from the base. We don't want that. We want to turn off hidden lines in that view. And now it looks nice, neat and clean. Click on auxiliary to make your auxiliary view. Pick the view that you want. So I'm going to click on this guy. Then I have to tell it which surface I want to make an auxiliary view from and that's going to be this line here and I'm just going to pull it out like I would a normal view. Also because this is also giving me really ugly lines I'm going to double click, turn off global, turn off hidden lines. Now these lines here that make this little box are really you don't need them so we're going to right click on them and we're going to turn off visibility. right click turn off visibility okay that's your auxiliary view folks and we're going to double click on this guy we want him to be pink cuz you know you got to have a pink kind of put it where you're happy with it and then you're going to of course do center lines by going to annotate Use the plus sign for all the ones that look like circles, even the ones on the auxiliary view. And then we're going to go back and do the center line bisectors on all these other guys. So the reason we do auxiliary views, folks, is when you have a 
slope surface, it's really hard to get a true size and shape represented with your typical um, orthographic views, and this allows us to do that by projecting just this slanted piece over here. So save it and print it to the 5430 and turn it into the tray.